Okay, well, we uh, have been doing Block Island probably back back to the J-30 days. Oh, let's see, I hate to uh, admit to it, but I've been sailing boats for probably 60 odd years. Started back in 86, we did them straight through. A 91, 91, first Block Island race week. So, I don't know how many years that is, but it's a lot. When we come to Block Island, it's just the beginning of the summer. We arrive with the honeysuckle smell. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place. The friends I've met and still have over 30, 35 years, are tremendous. It's great to come back and see them. You have a great bonding with your crew and it's a great time for us all. Yeah, there was Sunday day and uh, we took the engine van and about 20 people in a van. They kept egging me on to go this way, go that way. And there was one point we couldn't we were stuck at the bottom of a ravine looking straight up. Playing bocce with uh, uh, somebody making our cocktails while we played on the lawn. Taking my parents to the tent party. And then the wildness continued because the van was fixed and we jumped back in and we don't remember what happened after that. Mudslides. Having mudslides at the oar. <laughs> it's between mudslides and cooking for some awesome teams out here. Woo! <laughs> We got, we got all the sleeping bags, we got, we got fishing rods, we're good, man. It's the 25th anniversary of Block Island Race Week and this is day number two. Hi, I'm Tucker Thompson from T2P TV and the question on the entire fleet's mind this morning is whether we'll be back to racing around the buoys as normal or the famous 18.2 mile round the island race. The race committee will make the call at 9 a.m. That's your race committee. On this day in history in 1524, the Italian navigator Verrazano discovered Block Island and then it was then known as Manassas Island. And today will be a friendly Block Island race. Stand by for a harvest status signal at 0930. Shifting to channel 71. And it's official, we'll be going around the island counterclockwise in a building sea breeze. It's IRC 1 and 2 and the Swan 42s all on the line first and they're off. Good start for the entire fleet. The building flood tide has most all of the fleet heading inshore. Next on the line, IRC 3 and 4. The breeze is light. That sea breeze is yet to fill in. The big boat's short tacking off the shoreline. Oh, close cross as well. Picking lanes is hard in the big fleets. Here's an interesting difference in strategy. The first group short tacks inshore, in amongst each other, but there's less breeze in there and a lot of wind shadows. So the second group here is all heading offshore on port for a little bit more breeze. Conditions are changing by the minute. Breeze filling in back from the left and the J109s head inshore. And for perf one and two, it's the same plan. For Damian Emery and the J105s, another beautiful start will turn into a good race. He's currently the division leader. Back on the line with the start of the J80s. Committee boat is definitely favored as this fleet heads upwind. Toughest part about starting in a fleet like this is finding lanes of clear air when you know you want to go straight here. Clark McKinney is leading the division and just keeping a lane to lured of the rest of the group. Perf 4 and the cruising non-spinnaker divisions typically sail distance races each day here in Block Island, but today they'll join the rest of the fleet for all 18.2 miles. Sorry, that was cruising spinnaker, and it is the beautiful wooden boat Fidelio. The crew with all matching shirts, they are leading this division. The last class to start finally is cruising non-spinnaker and the double-handed division. And with that, all 182 boats are on the course. The beautiful Black Watch, a fitting tribute to this silver anniversary, sailed the first Block Island race week 
1965 with co-founder Jakob Ibristrand at the helm. The windward mark for this course is the southwestern tip of the island, R4, and it's going to be a tight reach. And this is where the fleet will start to set spinnakers. Now it's a long reach along the southern shore of the island in a light but slowly building breeze. As it builds, it seems to fill in offshore first, advantaging those to windward. True to form, as the sea breeze builds, it shifts right. We've now got a downwind run off the southeast light. Off a of southeast light is one of the few Rolex drop marks of the course. Soulmates nails it. It'll be a long port reach on the next leg. James! James! John! John! Distant passion! Into them. No. On the next run, some boats go too far inshore. The island is actually blocking the breeze and slowing the progress. Boats offshore, however, have a little bit more wind. Some boats who push it too far inshore are actually almost totally become the breeze shifting forward around the northern tip of the island. Offshore, however, it is a totally different story. The breeze had shifted forward and picked up. Crews are on the rail. While Bandit leads the competitive Swan 42s overall, it is Paul Zabatakis and crew aboard Impetuous, owning the Round the Island race today. We've gone almost all the way around the island, past the shoal with 1BI, and there's the North Lighthouse in the background as the U.S. Naval Academy's Corsair leads the entire fleet. There's the future of the U.S. Navy. Your tax dollars at work, all of them hiking on the rail, and it looks like a lot of fun. And there he is, the U.S. Naval Academy's offshore sailing coach. I think one of the best sailors in the world. There are a few people that haven't learned something from this man, John Tahansky. Well done. It's been just over two hours and 40 minutes as we prepare to finish right where we started. And with the U.S. Naval Academy's Corsair, Andy Beeling at the helm, they'll take line honors, which is fitting for the biggest and fastest boat. And that wraps up the Round the Island race. So now the fleet heads back in here to Great Salt Pond and, of course, the party on shore where the mudslides seem to flow endlessly here at the Oar. And there'll be a big party with Mount Gay Rum under the big tent. Tomorrow, it's back to the business of Round the Buoys here in Block Island. Until then, I'm Tucker Thompson for T2P TV.